This is lesson 6-1, which is key features of exponential functions. Our essential question is how do graphs and equations reveal key features of exponential growth and decay functions? So the first example looks at two different exponential equations. The first one is f of x equals 2 to the x. So you can see the graph down here. So what we have to know is when we're writing an exponential, it's in the form a times b to the x. And a is going to be our initial value or our y-intercept, and b is our growth or decay rate. So if you look at the 2 to the x, another way of writing it, let me give myself more space here, would be f of x equals 1 times 2 to the x. Then it's a little bit easier <coughs> excuse me, to see the a and the b value. So you can see that's why our y-intercept is at 1, and our growth rate is 2, so that's why it's increasing. Okay, so it tells us our domain is all real numbers, our range is all real numbers greater than 0. You can see that it has a horizontal asymptote at 0, so it's going to approach 0 but never touch it. We have a y-intercept at 1. Um, the asymptote is the x-axis, and then it talks about our m behavior. So as x goes to negative infinity, so as we go to the left, y goes to 0. And as x goes to positive infinity, or the right, y goes to infinity. So now part b, it's a little bit clearer that a is 5 and b is 1 half. You can see that corresponds with our y-intercept on the graph. So 5 is our y-intercept, our a value. And then this function is decreasing because our um, growth or decay factor, in this case a decay factor, is 1 half. So the domain still is all real numbers. The range is still all, all real numbers greater than 0. Our y-intercept at 5, still an asymptote at the x-axis. But then you'll notice our end behavior flipped. So as we go to the left, it goes to infinity. And as we go to the right, it goes to 0. Okay, example two is, it says to graph, we're not going to graph on these, we're just going to describe, I mean, it might sketch a graph, how the graph in terms of transformations of the parent function f of x equals 3 to the x. So if we have rough sketch, that's what 3 to the x is going to look like. And it says how do the asymptote and the intercept of the given function compare to the asymptote and the intercept of the parent function. So for the first one, if we have negative 3 to the x, that negative, just like we've seen in the past, is going to reflect over the x-axis. So that means that our graph's going to look something like that. So it means our y-intercept, instead of being at positive 1, would be at negative 1. Um, and the asymptote would remain the same, because it's still approaching 0 just from the other side. Okay. So this one, we have a minus 4 on the outside. That's going to shift our whole graph down 4. So if we were sketching this, oops, I didn't do that the best. OK, so um, th how that's going to affect our, so our asymptote at 0, x equals, sorry, y equals 0 is going to shift down to y equals negative 4. And so that means that instead of hitting the, the y-axis at 1, we would hit at negative 3. So it's going to be, the whole graph would just be shifted down 4. Okay, and then this last one here, this is going to shift it to the left 5. So, 1, 2. It's going to go kind of like that. So we would need more information. We need to plug in values um, to find our y-intercept or graph it on Desmos. So it's going to be a little bit different because of the shift left or right. So up in the exponent shifts it left or right. If it's outside like this, it's going to shift it up or down. OK, example three says the population of a large city was about 4.6 million in the year 2010 and grew at a rate of 1.3% for the next four years. So when we are writing 
story problem, when we're put, turning a story problem into a exponential equation, it's going to be y equals, and then we have our a value, and then it's either 1 plus r to the t or 1 minus r if it's decay. So this one says grew at a rate of 1.3%. So that tells us that it's going to be plus. So we would write this as y equals 4.6. Then it's going to be 1 plus, and then we put the rate as a decimal. So it's 1.3%. So we divide that by 100, and that would be 0.013 to the t. And then we can simplify that by saying 4.6, 1.013 to the t. So this right here is what we call the growth factor. Okay, so then the second part says if the population continues to grow at the same rate, what will the population be in 2040? So we're going to use that equation, 4.6 times 1.013, so this was for the year 2010, so that's our zero year. So 2040 is 30 years past 2010. So we're gonna type that into our calculator. So 4.6 times 1.013 raised to the 30th. And we get 6.78, but remember that was millions. So 6.78 million would be the population in 2040. Okay, and our last example says a car was purchased for $24,000. The function 24 times 0.8 to the X can be used to model the value of the car in thousands of dollars X years after it was purchased. Okay, it says does the function represent exponential growth or decay? This is going to be a decay equation, and the reason we can tell that is because our b value is 0.8. So remember, numbers bigger than 1 make it growth. Numbers smaller than 1 make it decay. So we can, and then it says, what is the rate of decay? So we have to think that 0.8 is equal to our 1 minus r. So we want to figure out what r is. So r would be 0.2 because 1 minus 0.2 would equal 0.8. So that's our decimal value of r. So if we multiply that by 100, that gives us 20%. So we would say that the value of the car decays or depreciates or decreases by a rate of 20% per year. Okay, so let me know if